And now I'm genuinely like, did I read it? <laughs> oh my God. I hate this. And I'll probably have nightmares tonight, so cool. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. So this week I have a very fun reading vlog that I'm doing that is essentially a booktuber taste test. I am going to be reading three books picked out to me by another booktuber. However, there's a little bit of a twist. Two of them are books that they liked and one is a book that they did not like. <laughs> So the booktuber that I'm doing this taste test with is Lexi from Books with Lexi, who I am super excited to be collaborating with in this video. She also is going to have a vlog up today of the books that I gave her. Again, two of them are ones that I liked and then one was one that I didn't like. And <laughs> I was a little chaotic in the books that I picked out for her because I actually don't think she's gonna like any of them. <laughs> But I wanted to give her books that I never really talk about because I didn't want her to automatically know which ones were which. And I also wanted to give her books that she probably wouldn't have read or like picked up outside of this video. I won't spoil which ones I picked out for her, so I will link her video so you can go watch and see what she <laughs> thinks of them. I would be very surprised if she likes one, but I hope that she does. So let's find out what books she picked for me. Okay, so I just got the clip from Lexi of the books that she picked out for me. Like I said, two of them are books that she likes. One is a book that she dislikes. I feel like Lexi and I don't have the most similar taste in books. I think where we do overlap is like horror and thriller. There are a bunch of books that we both love and we both hate. So there are some similarities. I'm very curious to see what she is going to pick out for me. Hi Riley, I'm really excited to be doing this collab with you. I have some books picked that I'm so excited to see you read. I feel like a lot of times our tastes do line up and then every once in a while there's something that is completely opposite. So yeah. I'm really hoping. That's what I was saying. We have a lot of similarities. Some of her favorite books are also my favorite books, but then there's other times where we're just like so opposite. <laughs> Okay, glad we're on the same page. Really hoping that this goes well, and I even hope you like the one I did not. So the first book is Pen Pal by Dathan Auerbach. This is horror following a man connecting six stories from his past and realizing that there's a creepy thing that connects them all. Okay, I'm so excited for that one. This is a book that I think I first heard about from Lexi. I can't remember if she liked it or not. I just remember her describing it when she was reading it on like reading sprints that we were on one time and I like made a note of it, but I don't think I ever saw what she ended up rating it. So I'm very intrigued. Next is Loot by Jennifer Thorne. This is folk horror set on an island where once every seven years they have to make some sacrifices to the island to keep their good luck. Okay. That is a book that I've really been wanting to read. I already own a copy of it and it sounds so good. It totally sounds like it's gonna be my kind of horror. So I'm super excited about that one. Oh my God, now I just remembered one of these is ones she didn't like. And both of these I'm like so excited for. Oh no, okay. And the third book I'm having you read is Middle Game by Shannon McGuire. This is following twins Roger and Dodger as they discover that they might not be completely human and their quest to attain godhood. So those are my three picks for you. I absolutely cannot wait to see what you think of all of these books. Okay, so middle game. Uh-oh. <laughs> you might be thinking I had a strange reaction to seeing that book on here. It's because I've read it. <laughs> this is not Lexi's fault because I gave her my Goodreads and so she checked to see if I had read any of these books. And I never marked Middle Game as read on Goodreads. I've also never talked about reading it in any of my videos for a very specific reason, because I have no memory of reading this book. <laughs> I know that I read it, but I read it on a day when I was like really not feeling good. I had a migraine. I was very much in like brain fog. And why did I pick that day to read it? I don't know. But um, because of that, I literally have no memory of reading it. No idea what the book is about. So I never marked it as read because I always knew that at some point I wanted to go back and reread it, but like basically read it for the first time. I think I liked it when I read it, but again, I have no memory of it. So I'm actually 
actually really excited that Lexi picked it. Now I have an excuse to reread it. I'm really not good at rereading books because I'm always like, oh, I just want to read something else, something new. So without this push, I don't know that I would have gone back to it anytime soon. I'm so excited for all of these, but one of them she didn't like. Okay, I'm gonna make a prediction. I think, oh, okay. See, I know Lexi loves horror. I know she's not a very big fantasy reader and middle game is fantasy. So like my instinct is to say she didn't like middle game and that she liked the two horror books, but I feel like that might be a trick. It's a red herring. So she did like middle game and it's one of the horror books that she didn't like. Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm very excited to read all of these and see what I think about them and if Lexi and I have the same taste in books. So the first book that I'm going to be starting for this vlog is going to be Loot by Jennifer Thorne. I have really been wanting to read this. It sounds amazing. The comps that I've seen for this are Midsommar and Final Destination, which just sounds really cool. It's a folk horror set on this island called Loot where every seven years a bunch of people die in like a sacrifice. And I just feel like this is really gonna be my vibe. I'm gonna start it right now and we will see how far I can get into it. It's not very long, it's less than 300 pages, so I do feel like I could read this all today. I have nothing else going on today. Let me start it and I will give you my first impressions. Ooh, it has a map. I was not expecting that. Okay, I read the first chapter, which starts out with three days before, and then chapter two is two days before, so we're counting down to something, which I really like. So far, I'm really enjoying the vibes. It weirdly has a very cozy feeling to it. Like, this already feels like cozy fantasy, which is very weird for a horror book, but I really like the setting. It's set on this island, so I'm getting like, misty island, like small village vibe. But what's interesting is that this takes place in alternate history where there's like a war going on between England and America, which I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know, we'll see how that goes. I kind of thought this would lean more like fantasy, but like it's alternate history. I don't know, I'm a little bit confused by that. We'll see, but basically, we have this woman who just recently got married to like the lord of the island whose family has long been protecting the people of the island. So she's now the lady of loot and there's this big like day every seven years that everyone's always like talked about as like being like a big tradition on the island. We know from the synopsis that lots of people die on this day, which I actually kind of wish we didn't know that because we're following her perspective and she doesn't know what the day is. So I kind of wish like we didn't know either. I feel like that has taken out a little bit of the suspense. Everyone's preparing for this day and her husband really wants to get them off the island, but they miss their boat. So now they're stuck on the island for the day. I'm very intrigued where this is going because this is horror, right? It's listed as horror on the copyright page. So, okay. Maybe I'll get more horror vibes as I read. Again, I've only read <laughs> the first 40 pages. Um, okay, I finished Loot. It really did not take me very long to read. It's a very quick book. And I don't know if I liked it. I'm so confused. I feel like this book was confused. I really think this book did not know what it wanted to be because it's not horror. <laughs> That's for sure. It felt like it wanted to be so many different things. It wanted to be horror. It wanted to be fantasy. It wanted to be romance, but it didn't lean enough into any of those three genres and all of the elements in here, while they were very interesting, they were all so underdeveloped. The alternate history element to it made no sense and played no part in the book. So I don't even know why that was included. This could have just been fantasy. Like this could have just taken place in a fantasy world on this island. I don't know why this took place in our world in alternate history. I don't know why there was this weird war between America and England and like all of the other countries were taking sides and like, it just, there was no point to that at all. And like, yeah, people died in here, but having people die doesn't just automatically make it horror. I don't know. Like I wanted to like so many of the different elements to it. I wanted to like the romance. I was like, oh, okay. We're like leaning into a romance. Cool, I'm into it. And then it never really went anywhere. Then I was like, oh, there's this like kind of culty sacrifice vibe to it. I'm really into that. And then again, it never really went anywhere. This book really reminds me of two other books that I've read 
that I actually didn't like, but um, they were both YA books. One of them is The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw, and then the other one is like House of Salt and Sorrow. This book should have been marketed to the girlies who liked those books. A little bit magical, seaside, town, whimsical, but also dark, a little bit of a mystery. Like that's the vibe that's going on in this book. And it really reminded me of those two other books. I don't know, I'm confused. I think I'm gonna give it 2.5 stars. <laughs> which sucks because I could have really loved this. So 2.5 stars and I don't even need to look up what Lexi rated this. I can tell already she didn't like this. <laughs> Just based on what I know of her reading taste, I'm pretty positive that she didn't like this, which means she liked the other two books. So that is looking promising. It's really cold today. So I broke out my Raise Hell Read Books beanie and it is finally time for me to start my reread of Middle Game. Now, I am loosely using the term reread because as I mentioned, I have no memory of this book. I know that I liked it, but that is all. I can't tell any details. I don't know what it is I liked about it. I cannot remember what happens. I basically didn't read this book. I'm very happy that Lexi has now given me an opportunity and an excuse to reread it and hope that this time it sticks in my brain. I thought it would be fun to um, describe the plot of this book based on my memory. So let me do the best that I can. This book is about twins named Roger and Dodger. They don't know that they're twins. They're separated at birth. They're also not entirely human. They were created for something. There's some kind of thing that allows someone to ascend to being a god, but like the instructions are put inside of twins. That's all I got. <laughs> and I don't even know if that's correct. It just has one of the best openings to a book ever and probably the best first sentence ever. The first sentence is five minutes too late, 30 seconds from the end of the world. There is so much blood. Is that not so intriguing? Tell me that does not make you keep reading and find out what is going on. If you say no, you're lying. Yeah, I'm going to start this. I have the audiobook and maybe once I start it, it will jog my memory, but we'll see. I am very excited. But I did also just get some book mail that I wanted to share. One of them is a book that I have been keeping my eye out for because I really wanted to find a copy of this on Pango Books. And I was able to find one for $5. Um, and that is Venko. That just sounds super intriguing. It says, it's an epic of adventure, history, Americana, feminism, and magic about like witches and Salem, a road trip to New Orleans. I just feel like I, I'm gonna love this. I really wanna read this soon. And then the other book I got was sent to me from uh, the publisher and that is Body Parts by Eliza Clark. This is a book that came out in the UK a while ago and I believe it is being published in the US in May about an artist and obsession. I love obsession books. I've also seen this recommended as like a good book with female rage. That's my fun little book mail for the day. Now I'm going to dive into middle game. I put my hair like this to get it out of the way while I did my makeup, but it's totally giving like early 2000s poof. <laughs> Anyways, I have been listening to the audiobook for middle game, but I think I'm going to switch to just physically reading it because I do not like the narrator. The narrator is just like making everyone's voice like really cartoony and silly sounding. And it's just like hard to take it seriously. And I think that's why I keep getting like Powerpuff Girl vibes. The narrator is making it sound so ridiculous. I'm so glad that I'm rereading this because it's literally like I'm reading it for the first time again. I have no memory of this book. Like everything that's happening, I'm like, I have never read this before. And now I'm genuinely like, did I read it? I've talked about this a lot with my chronic illness. I have brain fog and memory issues. And this is like real life proof of that. This book just like disappeared from my brain. Either I completely forgot this fact or I didn't pick up on it when I read this the first time, but Roger goes to the same high school that I went to because he lives in Cambridge and there's only one public high school in Cambridge. And there was actually like a specific comment that he makes like when he's at the school that makes me believe Sean and McGuire has been there. So that's cool because now like I can literally picture all of his scenes. I know like what the the setting is where he lives. Now I'm like, can I make the poof work? <laughs> I feel like the answer is no. So I'm gonna switch to the physical book, Wish Me Luck. I finally finished Middle Game and I 
have to admit, I've been reading this book for three weeks. And since I started this book, I've read like 20 other books. <laughs> and that is not because it's a bad book or I wasn't enjoying it. I just feel like it's not the most readable book. As of right now, I don't know what my feelings are for this book or what I'm gonna rate it. So hopefully while I'm talking about it right now, I will come to some sort of conclusion because like I said, this took me forever to read. I never spend this long reading a book. It's very rare I will spend longer than a week on one book, regardless of length. Sean McGuire is my favorite author. She wrote my favorite series ever, the Wayward Children's series. She wrote my favorite horror book ever, Into the Drowning Deep. I love her writing. I just feel like this wasn't the Shauna McGuire book for me. The things that I liked about it, I really, really loved the alchemy, the combination of science and magic. I feel like the way that it was done in here was super unique. And this is definitely the kind of book that like, it really, really blends genres. It's really a fantasy sci-fi blend. I also think that Shauna McGuire is the only author who should be allowed to write twins. <laughs> All of her series or books that I've read so far have twins in them and they are always my favorite. From the Wayward Children series, Jack and Jill, it's like a super complex twin relationship between the two of them that it's explored throughout that series. Into the Drowning Deep had twin characters. They were more minor characters, but I loved them so much. And then you have Roger and Dodger. The thing that I love most about this book was their relationship. I just think no author should ever write twins if their name is not Sean and McGuire. <laughs> I will say, if you enjoyed this book, I would definitely recommend checking out the library at Mount Char. I feel like that is the only other book I've read that has the same vibe and style, specifically with the way that like the magic works in both of those stories. Maybe because she is my favorite author and I'm comparing this to all of her other books that I've read that I've given five stars and that are like my all time favorites. This just doesn't rank up there for me and it also took me forever to read and I could only ever read it in like short bursts. I think I'm gonna give it four stars, which I know is gonna break a lot of people's hearts because I feel like everybody gives this five stars. And then I also feel like everyone expects me to give it five stars because she's my favorite author. But I almost feel like because she's my favorite author, I can't give it five stars because I know what a five star Sean and McGuire book feels like to me. Like I'm not obsessed with this like I am for other books that I have given five stars. I don't know. I don't know if I'm making any sense. And I feel like I have to overly justify why I'm giving it four stars. No, I'm never gonna be that girl who gives my favorite authors five stars automatically. I have to be honest, and that is how I feel. All right, so the next book that I am starting is A Pen Pal by Dathan Auerbach. And this one, I literally don't know what it's about. The back is very vague. It says, in an attempt to make sense of his own mysterious and unsettling childhood memories, a man begins to reconstruct his past. Each chapter completes a different piece of the puzzle for both you and the narrator. And by the end of it all, you will wish that you could forget what he never knew. And that sounds so intriguing to me. This book actually started as a Reddit creepypasta story, which if you don't know what that is, creepypasta is just like a term for like an internet urban myth. And I've heard that it's very disturbing. So I thought what we could do is wait until tonight and read this in the dark. So I'm gonna wait until it gets dark out and then I will start reading this. Reading it in the dark could either be a great idea or one of the worst ideas that I've ever had. <laughs> I also realized there was a book that I completely forgot to vlog. Lexi and I were buddy reading Hellbent and I think we were doing it for this video. <laughs> But I ended up reading Hellbent like in a day. So I completely forgot to vlog it. And I don't even know if she's even finished it yet. Not sure if we're still vlogging it in this video, but I just wanted to mention, I did read Hellbent. I gave it five stars, loved it. I think I loved it even more than Ninth House. And there's a particular scene in that book that lives rent free in my head. I'm not gonna say what it is, but if you read it, you probably know. And I need to see some fan art of that scene or my life will never be complete. Okay, it is time for reading horror in the dark. It's actually like the perfect vibes for it right now because there's a thunderstorm. I don't know if you can hear it. I just went outside and I tried to record the thunderstorm. There is so much lightning right now. I don't really know if my camera was picking it up. I am very much in the dark. You can see the rest of my house. All of the lights are off except for my camera. It's just like pitch blackness all around me and I'm gonna dive in. We might even turn this off. Here we go, reading horror in the dark. Let's get into it. Okay, 
I'm gonna turn this on just while I am giving you like my updates, but I read the first story called Footsteps. The whole premise of this book is that it is the author putting the pieces together of all of these memories from his childhood and like weird things that happened to him that when you're a child, like you don't really make connections between things um, or like fully realize what's going on. But as an adult and he's like looking back, he's like putting pieces of a puzzle together in his me like repressed memories almost which the idea of repressed memories really freaks me out because i actually had a situation when i was a teenager where i recovered some repressed memories and it was super traumatic <laughs> i actually like i said i did not know what this really was going into it this is from what i've gathered so far stalking horror of him being stalked throughout his life by somebody which <laughs> Now I'm second guessing my idea to do this reading in the dark because home invasions and stalking are the two things that like real life genuinely terrify me. The idea of like being watched when you don't know you're being watched or like when you think you're alone is my biggest paranoia. I genuinely always think I'm being watched. I always think there's a hidden camera somewhere or someone's looking through my window. So this is freaking me out. To see this little story here, balloons. Sounds cute, sounds nice. What could go wrong? Balloons, wrong. All right, I'm gonna start the third story called Boxes. Should be fun. <laughs> Turning off the light again. Let's get into some boxes. <gasps> oh my God, Boxes is a cat. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. No. Oh my God, I hate this. No, 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 oh my, no, oh my god, I hate this, this story boxes should be illegal, I hate this, <laughs> like this is so disturbing, I have never in my life written to an author, I wanna write this author an email and say, fuck you. How dare you put me through the trauma of boxes. Okay, we are moving along. Maps, wonder what that is. Does he have a puppy now named Maps? Oops, I hit the emergency call button on my phone. My phone even knows this is an emergency. <laughs> I'm gonna leave my camera light on now, okay? I'm still technically in the dark, but I'm getting freaked out. This is giving me a stomach ache. It's not even that it's like, like gory or I don't even know. It's just like so realistic and disturbing. <gasps> mm -mm. Oh my God. <laughs> I hate this. I think this is the last story. Please let this be the last. Oh my God. There's two more stories. I'm sad. I'm scared. Oh my god, okay. I finished Pen Pal. Clearly I had a lot of feelings about it. Here's the thing. I love horror. I feel like there's three levels to horror, okay? One are scary things that can't happen. Supernatural, paranormal, aliens, monsters, all of that is like very unlikely will ever happen. Then there are scary things that are real, but they need a specific set of circumstances to happen. So they're probably unlikely. For example, space, terrifying, but I'm never gonna go to space. Then you have scary things that can happen very easily at any time to anyone. And that's like home invasions, stalking, basically what this whole book is. And that is so terrifying to me because I live alone. I'm just a lone woman in my home. This was so disturbing. I think I'm gonna give this four stars. Obviously I read it very quickly. For what a horror is set out to do, I did enjoy it. <laughs> and it's a great horror. It actually disturbed me, which very rarely happens. The only reason it's not five stars is I don't particularly know if I liked the writing that much. There were just some things that like, seemed awkward or weird to me or like he would take very long time to explain something pretty simple i don't know if this was a debut or not but i just feel like there could be things with the writing that could have been better but i definitely liked it well 
<laughs> yeah, I liked it. And I'll probably have nightmares tonight, so cool. All right, so I have now finished all three books that Lexi picked out for me. I have my laptop here, so we're gonna find out which ones she liked and which ones she didn't like. Again, my prediction is she did not like loot and she liked middle game and pen pal. Let's find out. Pen pal, she gave five stars, so obviously I knew that. Middle game, she also gave five stars. Okay, so I was correct. She gave loot two stars. So to compare my ratings to hers, I gave this 2.5 stars. She gave it two stars, pretty similar. I gave pen pal four stars. She gave it five stars. And same with middle game. I gave middle game four stars. She gave it five stars. Not very different. We're pretty on par with the books that she picked out for me. I definitely can see why she would give both of these five stars. I feel like these are two books that like, I get why they're five stars for people. They just weren't five stars for me, but I did really enjoy both of them. I could see myself upping Pen Pal to five stars just because I feel like this is a type of horror that's like really, really gonna stick with me for a long time. And I'm probably gonna think about for the rest of my life and hate it because it's so disturbing. But yeah, this was really fun. So thank you a lot, Lexi, for doing this taste test collab with me. Definitely make sure to check out her video. I will link it down below with um, the books that I gave her. I'm so excited to see what she thinks of them even though like I said my prediction is she's not gonna like them <laughs> So thank you guys for watching and if you liked this video Please like and subscribe and consider checking out my patreon where I post tons of exclusive content like fun readathons weekly reading sprints We have a monthly book club and discussion a private discord server and tons and tons of exclusive videos You can only find on patreon. I would love to have you come over there and join us. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye